Hit it, Phil. Da, 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 da. Can it be the breeze that fills the trees with rare and magic perfume? Oh, no. <laughs> it isn't the breeze. It's Jackson time. La, da, da, da. Well, hello again. This is Buck Benny speaking. I am joined with Hope Sears and Kathy Fuller Seeley. Uh, we are here to, to, for us, this is one of our first recordings of the, the what, the fall season, I guess. Um, for you, you're, I don't know when you're going to see this. Anyway, it's 2023. Um, I love doing these. Um, I love presenting the Jack Benny shows. This one is one of the very earliest ones that's in syndication that's in the syndication package um so we'll get it it'll have a, a nicer picture than like we're used to seeing it was filmed of course uh they put the the live episodes they don't have in the syndication package some of the film ones they do um and now of course the the only thing about the syndication package is that you get things cut out and things well I was delighted to see that the sportsmen were in this yeah. and I always love it when they're in these. You only really catch the sportsmen it seems like in the early episodes for some reason, though they're in the later episodes, they're just more likely to cut them out or something. I don't know why that's the case. I mean, cause Kathy, do you know where the sportsmen in like almost the whole run of the Jack Benny show? Um, well, I believe they lost lucky strike as a sponsor. Yeah. Sometime around 58, 57, 58, uh, because, uh, 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 and then you wouldn't need the sportsman anymore. So I'm looking it up here real right. quick. So, because it would be interesting to know when they stopped appearing the sportsman, but, um, because maybe that's why I've, I've just always thought they were there and just cut out in the 1960 episodes, but maybe, sure. maybe they stopped in 59. Okay. The sure. sportsman, oh, actually, um, were on the show through the end of 1962. So okay. I'm absolutely wrong. Okay. Excellent. See, and usually I'm the one who's absolutely wrong. So there we go. <laughs> Hope looks like she has something to say. She has a no, pensive I, look I, upon her face. No, yes. I'm just curious as to like who is who would be cutting them out because I mean it might be that our modern audiences might be cutting it out. Like I know that they do for antenna TV because um, of course, it's promoting cigarettes, and so you right. can't have that. Right. Um, yep. so. Well, that's why in the syndication package, when it's when it was made to send out to syndication, I'm not sure how early that was, but they're going to have different sponsors entirely, and and they wouldn't necessarily be cutting them out because they're tobacco ads. I mean, that <laughs> makes it doubly cutting them out. But I mean, even if they were doing ads for carnation milk or instant milk or something they would cut that out because it's like their other sponsors don't want these guys getting a free ride yeah. and, and things yeah, exactly. and, uh but what you what i think is funny is you end up with a lot of these shows i'm not sure if Jax does it i think it does on some seasons but certainly when you're watching like old gun smoke episodes or old episodes of lots of things in the closing credits they may have a static picture of whatever product they were selling mm -hmm. and because they they don't remove the credits you get that picture of that product and uh so i thought that was pretty smart the companies that put their product in on the end credits and made it where it's difficult to get rid of it and so they always get this little free bit of static advertising for carnation instant milk i remember seeing those and cornflakes in some uh shows i've seen that and and uh various things so that is that's very ingenious Yes, yeah, it works. Uh, and then, and then, of course, with the sportsmen, it's so interesting because what they'll do is they usually sing the song straight for a while for a yeah. few verses, and then they switch it over, morph it into being about the cigarettes or whatever they're advertising. So when they're editing, if you're going to be a creative editor, you can go, oh, I can just cut out this snippet, mm -hmm. this part where they switch gears and are talking about the... Um, the the product and instead keep the, keep the part that's talking about just singing the song um some episodes they do that some they don't i'm thinking part of it could be if it has to be a hard cut where all of a sudden you're going to stop the song in the yeah. middle and, and they're going to go what yeah. happened there that you don't do it there's other times where they kind of virtually end the song and then restart it with the the commercial and so at those points you could, yeah. you could go ahead and cut it there but uh, but i think just as you all have said 
um, the just plain commercial. I mean, the, the need for somebody else like Antenna TV needs wants to cut out bits to add more of their own commercial time. Yes. And so nobody's going to miss this part that's not part of the narrative. Correct. Side. Correct. So. It would, well, it would totally make sense. I mean, if you're going to have to, because a show from the 1950s is going to have a lot less commercial time than modern stuff. Yeah. And so even when they're creating it for, for uh, syndication, they had to cut it down some. So that would be a normal place to cut. Um, also then again, like you're saying, they, they probably had to cut, it's probably been cut over and over again that they've cut shorter and shorter versions of this mm -hmm. as yep. time has gone on. And Terrible. people are, are wanting more and more uh, commercial time. It it bothers me, though, in some of them, because um, it makes less sense for the plot in some ways, like why Don Wilson or um, like Harry Von Zell are there for why are they there? It's like you never see them actually doing their job of advertising for the prod product when you're um watching yes. on antenna tv or whatever and so it's very confusing as to well why wouldn't george burns just fire harry it doesn't make sense why he's around anyway yeah. correct <laughs> correct where he had a big part of being the part of the advertising yeah agreed agreed and and that doesn't work very well also it makes it where even though you find an episode of far lesser visual quality or sound quality it's still sometimes fun to watch them because then you'll actually mm -hmm. see yeah. the 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 product and the advertisement and the whole thing, which I think makes it interesting. What I like to do sometimes if I have the time and if I have two copies is I'll take the high res copy that I have and insert the commercials back in from the low res. And then you end up with the best of both worlds in my point of view. So uh, anyway. terrific. Yeah. So, and this is one of those that I'll, I'll look around and see, because I think it's out there floating around uh, both ways. So anyway, Great. so there we go. Um, but let's talk about the episode. So uh, I love this one. It's, uh, I, I love it whenever they're, because they, they did it on the radio show. And so people know, mm -hmm. I've mentioned before, whenever you take a radio show and bring it to television, I usually really enjoy those. I love the fact that Mary's in this. I love the fact that Frank Nelson is in this. Um, it has some creative filming. I'm not sure. I'd, I'd have to check who filmed it, but there's a one folk person that films episodes, that directs episodes, that does an extra specially good job of being creative with their camera setups and things. And it's probably that person because it uh, they have a shot where Jack's at the top of the stairs and they're shooting mm -hmm. down the stairway at, at, at uh, Eddie Rochester Anderson. Um, and it's just an, an interesting shot I haven't seen of their house before, and it makes it feel like they're really in, in a true house and, and things. Um, I, I do, I love that this, this also feels, it's one of those episodes that, uh, whether don't, they're not standing in front of the curtain, the whole thing feels like yeah. a straight on sitcom episode. I really like these ones. They didn't do them all that often, and so I wish they would have done a few more of these. But uh, especially if you're filming, I feel like, uh, I would have enjoyed it maybe more if when they did the live action ones, they did live action in front of the curtain and the whole thing and make it mm -hmm. obviously live action. And then when they filmed them, they just went right to doing a sitcom type filmed one every time. And I think I would have enjoyed that more. They they did more of this hybrid thing where sometimes the film ones just look like a filmed live episode. And, mm -hmm. and that I don't like as much. I'd rather just watch the live episode. Uh, anyway, Let's go over to you guys and see what you thought of this. Um, Hope, why don't you give us your thoughts on this? Yeah, I feel like this is just kind of an the one of those that you return to. Mm -hmm. um, it's just kind of a classic, classic episode um, because it's been both in the radio and television. And um, I we kind of said this off camera that um, it it's one of those that like there's not anything in particular that necessarily stands out it's a bunch of little things um and yeah i i and i enjoy i enjoy this episode because of like all the in little interactions that that are had oh yeah and and i think you just reminded me of something too one thing we haven't talked about with this but it's obvious is we're not going, oh yeah, this is the one with 
Dan Blocker on it, or this is the one with, mm -hmm. right? He has, he doesn't have a guest star that's a big notable guest star. This yeah. is more the cast and, and, and the regular set of characters, which mm -hmm. fans, I, I think we love these episodes. We love them more than a lot of the ones where he has a big guest star because he has to give so much time to the guest star and figure out how to yeah. fit that guest star within his show and everything where this way they could just let the regulars run wild with it. And uh, I love that. Yeah. I, I, I love Mary. I love, like I say, the Frank Nelson beat pieces, the, the, the bits they could, they can play up and have bigger bits with Eddie and Jack together. And I always love that. So yeah. this episode is a, a treasure for me. Um, Kathy, what are your thoughts on that? I, I so agree with you, Daryl. And I especially love the second part of this episode when they're in the clothing shop mm -hmm. because it's such visual humor you couldn't have done on the radio of Jack, uh, you know, falling asleep and, and looking so wooden that he could be, you know, fairly, that was fairly well done yes. to, to see um, the the uh, um, uh, the workers hauling away the dummies. Right. Um, I thought that uh, that worked great. What strikes me ultimately is that there are two impossible things in this episode that you know that that break the um, everything we know about uh, Jack's uh, a character. Uh, and well, the first one uh, is Mary Livingston in a mink stole riding a bus. Right. What are you talking about? And mm -hmm. I was thinking about it. I woke up in the morning and going, how else could they have done it? Could they have caught a ride down to the store? You know, because just yes. the idea of Mary willing to be on the bus. But it's, it's on funny the bus. to me, and it's not meant to be funny necessarily, probably. No, but, but, you know, yeah. it's unusual. That and then um, Jack in his fury and his, his tiredness gathering up uh, half a dozen suits and all the ties. Yes. You know, that's uh, we've seen him um, take all the free a cake at a yes. grocery store, but this idea that he'd be willing to buy all these things just to go home yes, is, is a little odd. And for Benny fans, it's great. If you look at the name of the shop, it's very sweet. It's named something like Golden and Fenchel. And those are um, Gordon and Fenchel, excuse yes. me. And those were his uh, um, Waukegan relatives. Mm -hmm. And uh, that um, Frank Nelson mentions Mr. Mentions Mr. Sinekin. Uh, uh, we'll we'll be getting something for you, and that was his great friend Julius Sinekin. So I I love pulling in his his sort of family history and and inside jokes that made would make them smile. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, and I'm going to take that and go with something because uh, you mentioned the whole mannequin thing, uh, kind of deep and where I could be totally wrong. This is just me putting things together, but you being a media historian, maybe you can help me with this. Um, uh, for years when they would talk about television shows uh creating them filming them right you would say okay we need before we do the action we need some foreshadowing to show where we're going with this right and and they did that religiously in the 50s the 60s even the 70s the murder mysteries or whatever they show the show the gun a few acts before they use the gun and things, but you know it's there and things, and then play the foreboding music or whatever. Uh, in this case, they show them uh, uh, that they they talk about how they're going to have to move the mannequins and things mm. and so forth. Um, sometimes I feel like, especially with Jack, you're giving away the joke, and and an audience can immediately put together yeah. two and two, and oh, I know what's going to happen now, right? Where I think it could be funnier if they just did it. Right. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden mm -hmm. uh, they just move him and, 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 you know, you, you don't get any of the foreshadowing. I don't think you need it sometimes. And I feel like they felt like you need it. Uh, I feel like in modern shows, I can't, it seems like there's that foreshadowing is played down a lot more because they do think it gives too much away to the audience mm -hmm. and the audience is smart enough. They're going to put this together anyway. So, so I, it just doesn't feel like I see that as much as I did in the past would you agree with that kathy sure and, mm -hmm. and and it has to do with snippets of shows showing up now on social media all the different yeah. ways you can have to sell things as you say so you know uh, sitcoms and shows like that seem to be more compartmentalized yes and and not drawing out the narrative across right. the entire 26 minutes that's a very interesting insight yeah well in the in the uh, exception to that 
is of course the running joke that goes throughout the episodes right because that's right. not so much foreshadowing as it is i guess it is somewhat but it's it's more Call callbacks yeah. right yeah. so you're calling mm -hmm. back to something that happened earlier and certainly uh the show that i think of that did that more than anything since benny's radio shows probably even i don't even i don't even think jack did it as much in his tv shows he did but certainly seinfeld like Mm -hmm. did that to a ridiculous mm -hmm. amount in some of their episodes which made it so much fun because they just like jack they discovered the more we do it the funnier it gets and it doesn't even yeah. the last ones don't even mm -hmm. have to be a topper on the mm -hmm. last one they almost just bring it up again it's so funny just said oh this is still coming up it's still coming up the soup nazi is still mm -hmm. doing these things um, and that that's a good example because i think um otherwise if it's something other than the soup Nazi, I find that that would be hard to do and introduce to new audiences mm -hmm. is if uh, you have a running joke throughout a show, it doesn't really necessarily make sense or it's one that goes week to week, which may yeah. make it harder for new audiences to find it. So maybe mm -hmm. that's why they felt the need mm -hmm. for a little bit of foreshadowing but in comedy shows i especially don't think it's necessary because part of comedy is the surprise mm -hmm. the element of surprise but um what I, I do wish it was in more murder mysteries sometimes because sometimes you get to the end and i'm like wait i still don't get it yeah, <laughs> yeah right right oh it's, oh it's that guy yeah. <laughs> but you never like painted a way for it to be yep. that guy. It's like yep. you had the beginning and the end and there's only, there's not enough time in the middle. You uh, yep. Yeah, because yeah. because that's why I think you had like 90 minute shows back in the 70s and things like your your uh, McLeods and your uh, ver various uh, shows, the McMillan and Wife and that sort of thing and Columbo, because what you could do is you could paint have a bunch of red herrings where you're where you actually have the yeah. time to kind of plant some seeds for this person and some seeds for that person some seeds for the other and you go so it could be any of these and then at the end the the detective puts it all together and says it's this person and this is why and there's a huge payoff whereas if you didn't have that you're like okay well this doesn't really jive or work i was impressed with uh the comedy sort of uh dramedy i don't know what you'd call them of like monk and psych back in their time in that they could do it in in an hour and they would do a pretty good job of of painting so that you couldn't really figure out what was going on but then at the end when they solved it they would take you back through and show you those yes, scenes from... they do like the the monk here's the thing here's the thing exactly yeah. so so that was good no. And I love those things. I, I I always hope for more shows like that because I think yeah. they're so entertaining. Mm -hmm. And especially when they started throwing humor in. And really, the first one that did that was sort of Columbo, where it was humorous. The the guy in the rumpled coat going around and always yeah. kind of, I don't know, what are you, you know, and seeming clueless and everybody get, getting impatient with him, all the bad guys that he's are like, this is an idiot. I got caught by an idiot, you know, sort of thing. But then yeah. he shows his brilliance as he goes through. Uh, certainly for me, people ask me, though, know, because I counsel students and things, what is my technique for counseling students and things? And often I say it's sort of the Columbo technique that I use when I'm working with students, So, uh, which is a lot of fun. Anyway, yes. um, so a fantastic episode. Uh, certainly oh, Frank you. Nelson in this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. I, I love when he shows up and uh, he he's got his hair a little different in this one. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm like, well, like, what's going added on? Added a little hair? little product to the uh... yeah, exactly. I'm going okay, <laughs> but it was a character he's playing, and that's that's good. I mean, that we don't have to have him always look the exact same. Um, but but his bit is so funny, and all, it the writing for him is always so good. So I I just love to see him. Uh, and I'm trying to think of what other. Bits. I mean, I I think this features Mary more than most mm -hmm. of the episodes feature Mary, so mm -hmm. I love that. Um, uh, I, and and again, probably the easiest for her since there's only her and Jack and Frank. You yes. know, with a very small cast, yep. she um could feel as comfortable as possible doing her lines. Right. Um. You know, the uh, although her performance anxiety was supposedly you know making it really yeah. difficult. Yeah. Uh, shooting this on a quiet stage. Mm -hmm. Uh. Uh. I, I guess it was filmed in November of right. 54. 
Uh, so hooray that it, it allowed it to showcase what she did best. So Well, the person I miss on this that I would have thought would be there in the store would be like Mel Blanc. But I, Mel's not in this, right? No, he's no, not. So. It's a very small set. The, yeah. the, the clothing store true so. and it's and it's like okay do you want to take the time for mel and is it because you got to write a bit for him or whatever maybe they just didn't think they had the time to pull that off with all the other ground they're covering because they do cover a lot of ground and it's in his house in the store in the you know it's it, it's it's a little bit of everything yeah. in this so yeah yeah anyway when yeah, was so. this accident Oh no! Way way after well, this. the early sixties, okay. yeah, 50, 59, 60, something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And it anyway. could just not have been in the budget. You know, yeah. that's uh, uh. So what we don't know is who can't appear because they literally don't have the dollars. Yep. Uh, you don't know uh, about in the, the budget, budget thing, them, so. you don't know about availability. Maybe Mel's mm -hmm. doing a bunch of uh, voice, voice work, work at this point. I mean, who knows yeah. what's going on? I'm sure they had to. I mean, Mel was a busy guy. I'm sure they had to work around his schedule a lot. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we'll leave it at that, I think. Let folks enjoy this uh, great episode. And it's, I really love this fifth season. There's so many wonderful episodes, so many classic episodes mixed in, along with some of them being filmed in, in the syndication package and some of them not, some of them live. So we get a little bit of everything here and, and that's a joy and that's a lot of fun. So, and I thank you both for joining me to do well, this. Thank you. Um, I'm hoping this season, I would think we'd get through all of season five. Maybe we'll get through season six as well, which would be nice. And, uh, and then uh, this, uh, we, for us, we've just ended our uh, summer specials where we were entering the specials from the sixties and next summer we'll do the specials and things from the seventies um and and so that should be fun too but uh going through this year we'll like i say do season five and season five has a lot of episodes available i i think Perfect. i want to say we have 10 of them or something like that it's That's a decent great. amount yeah and this is when jack so kathy help me out with this i think at this point until 1960 he's uh doing like half a season of episodes every year like 13 or 12 or something right mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then yeah. it's like in the 60s he goes to a full 35 yeah then he goes to you're yeah, right amazing amounts of work so yeah yeah i just wish you know the syndication package is famously like 104 episodes i think mm -hmm. but there's probably another 60 maybe that are filmed but aren't in the syndication package i wish they would have released like a second syndication yeah. package at some point would have been lovely um they uh certainly for like gunsmoke you've got uh they've got various syndication packages they have the first half hour ones that are all packaged together in one set i think they're usually called marshall dylan or something then you've got the hour-long black and whites that are in one package and you've got the the famous package that everyone uses is the color package from 1967 till till it goes off the air in 75 and i wish they would have done something similar with jack and and released multiple packages but it is we have what we have so there you go thanks everybody see you guys next time from hollywood the jack benny program Maybe it's an emergency. Maybe something happened to Mary. Where are my slippers? Coming. Coming. Gee, I hope they don't hang up. Hello? This is Hank.
think? The all-night disc jockey. <laughs> what? If you tied spaghetti end to end, how many pounds would it take to go around the world? <laughs> if I tied spaghetti? If you answer the question correctly, you'll win two glorious weeks at Pismo Beach. <laughs> now, wait a minute. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. That answer is incorrect. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm not going to let him get away with this. <laughs> operator. Operator. Supper, please. Uh, will you please get me Hank the disc jockey? At 4 o'clock in the morning, are you crazy? <laughs> what? If I were you, mister, I'd crawl out of that phone booth, get a cup of black coffee, and go home. <laughs> go home? If you don't, you'll hate yourself in the morning. Oh, yeah? Well, you're just a smart aleck. Now, let me talk to the head operator. I'm sorry, but the head telephone operator is busy. Well, then let me talk to the supervisor. The supervisor isn't in. Would you like to talk to Alexander Graham Bell? <laughs> Look, I'd like... Oh, never mind. <laughs> No, I'll never get back to sleep. Imagine being awakened at 4 o'clock in the morning by a silly disc jockey. Get the craziest phone calls. If I didn't have such a good laundry business, I'd take my name out of the book. <laughs> the yellow paper. Hey, wait a minute. Why didn't Rochester answer the phone? Could have been that sound asleep. I'm gonna find out. Rochester? Rochester, why didn't you answer the phone? So that, it's four o'clock in the morning, he's not even in yet. Well, he'll hear about this. Wasn't even his night off. <laughs> Uh-oh. I think I hear a key in the front door. I'd like to see him get out of this. <laughs> oh, Rochester! On your toes. I'm dancing the menu. Rochester. Rochester. Now, look, you can stop with that silly dance. You're not fooling anybody. Now, what's the idea of coming in this hour of the morning? Coming in? Yes, I saw you open the door and come in. Oh, oh, that! I just stepped out to see if the milk had come yet. You just got out of bed to see if the milk had come. Do you expect me to believe that? I'd have a better argument about wearing pajamas. Right. Now, look, Rochester, it's very obvious that you were just coming home. Now, I want to know where you've been. Well, last night, the club I belonged to had a social gathering. Mm -hmm. And the president had intentions of breaking it up at 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock, eh? Well, if that was his intention, what happened? At 9.30, we elected a new president. <laughs> We'll talk about this in the morning. Now, go to your room. Yes, sir. Good night, boy. Good night. I'll never get to sleep now. See, now I don't even feel sleepy. In fact, I feel good. 
You know, a lot of people get up early in the morning and take long walks before breakfast. You see, the exercise keeps them young and healthy. <laughs> see, maybe that's what I need, exercise. Yes, sir. Yep, that'll be good for me. Now, lately, when I tell people I'm 39, some of them don't believe it. <laughs> Including me. <laughs> I'll take seven more years, even if it is bad luck. <laughs> hey, the sun will be up soon. Yep, I'm going to get dressed and take a nice long walk. Yeah, I'll see that. Hey. I think I'll call Mary. Maybe she'd like to go with me. Yada dee da dum, ba be da dum, da dum, da dee da dum, da dum, da dee da dum, da dee da dum, da Oh, hello, Mary. Who is this? This is Jack. Jack, what's the matter? Nothing. I just called to ask if you'd like to go for a walk with me. Go for a walk? What time is it? 20 minutes to 5. 20 minutes to 5? Yeah, the sun is up. Jack. What? Have you been eating those rum lifesavers again? <laughs> Get a cup of black coffee and go home. <laughs> anyway, it's none of your business. But Mary, I'll tell you what, you get dressed and I'll pick you up in about <laughs> you hung up. Yeah, I don't care what Mary says. I'm gonna take a nice long walk. <laughs> It's the first time I've ever been out at 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> See, Los Angeles is a wonderful place to live. <sighs> the air smells so good. See, this early in the morning when there's no smog, there's such visibility. this Camden Drive? We. you uh, took such a long walk, you must have gotten up pretty early. Early? I'll say I did. Some silly guy called Hank the Disc Jockey woke me up at 4 o'clock in the morning. No kidding. Did he ask you how many pounds of spaghetti it would take to go around the world? Yeah. How'd you know? I won $10 for sending in the question. <laughs> you? Look, you? Jack, look, Jack, you? The, the sportsman in a hurry and really, we're in a spot. I'm so tired, I can hardly keep my eyes open. Can't keep your eyes open? Hey, that's a wonderful idea. What's a wonderful idea? Hit it, fellas. You better wake up, wake up, you sleepy head. Get up, get up, get out of bed. Cheer up, son, it's time that you were rising. When the red, red robin comes bob, bob, bobbing along, 
when he starts throbbing his old sweet song. Wake up, wake up, you sleepy head. Get up, get up, get out of bed. Cheer up, cheer up, the sun is red. Live, love, laugh and be happy. What if I'd been blue? Now I'm walking through fields of flowers. Rain may glisten, but still I listen for hours and hours. Just a kid doing what I did again, singing a song. When the red, red robin comes bob, bob, bobbing along. Jack. Isn't that cute? in and wake him up. That's what he did to me at five o'clock this morning. Jack. Jack. Whistler's mother. <laughs> oh. Oh, Jill Mary, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? Well, you told me you wanted to buy a new suit today and you wanted me to go with you. What was it, today? Yeah, I'm, I'm so tired. Well, it's your own fault. Imagine getting up at five o'clock in the morning. What you won't do to see the sunrise over the California bank. That's not the reason I got up. You can blame it all on Hank, the all-night disc jockey. I don't know what you're talking about, Jack. All I know is that you want me to go shopping with you. Now, let's go. But, Mary, I'm so tired. Oh, Jack, you've been postponing it so long. Look, we can catch the bus right on the corner. Well, okay. Mary, we're going out. Why'd you take off your stole? Well, if you're gonna wear one. <laughs> oh, the oh, stop griping. Now, that wasn't such a long ride. But why do we have to get on such a crowded bus? It was, I, was, I had to stand all the time, and I'm so tired. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Instead of holding on to the strap, you stuck your head through the loop and fell asleep. Well, what's funny about that? At the next stop, a man got on, took one look at you dangling there, and said, I know his last show was bad, but he didn't have to go that far. <laughs> oh, he probably just did that for a gag. Then why'd he cut you down? <laughs> Mary, I haven't got time to argue. Anyway, if you'd have let me wear the shawl, I'd have had a seat. Help. Yeah, I'm so sleepy, I can hardly keep my eyes open. Well, this won't take very long. Oh, here comes the clerk now. Well, are you my little customer? <laughs> Mary, let's go home. Not till you get what you came for. Uh, clerk, Mr. Benny would like to buy a new suit. Oh, that's wonderful. Who are you looking for? Well, the photographers, this must be a publicity stunt. Now, look, I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning, and I'm in no mood. Oh, Mr. Nelson. Uh, pardon me. Yes? Mr. Gordon said you wanted to see us. Yes, I want you to redress all the mannequins in our department and finish that window display. Yes, sir. And now, uh, where were we? Uh, Rip Van Winkle would like to buy a suit. 
Jack. Well, I'm sure we can find something to fit you. Uh, follow me. Here we are. I'm uh, sure you'll like our price range. I have some beautiful suits at $150, and then I have some as cheap as $29. Well, I wouldn't want anything as expensive as 150 and still I wouldn't want anything as cheap as 29 I'd like something in between. About $30. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's see those. Miss Nelson, if you're wanted in the credit department. I'll be right back. While we're here, why don't you get a new tuxedo? You know, the one you have is so old-fashioned. My tuxedo old-fashioned? Well, maybe it used to be, but not anymore. Well, Jack, just because the moths ate the belt off the back doesn't make it modern. <laughs> I guess you're right. I mean, I noticed the sleeves were too short. Oh. <laughs> Certainly have a nice selection here. Pretty colors, too. <laughs> Jack, here's a nice... Jack. 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 If you're so tired, what are you wandering all over the store for? What are you talking about? Oh, come on. Oh, there you are. I'm sure you'll find something you like on this rack. What in the world is this? Oh, this was an idea of our designer, Mr. Sinekin. But it isn't selling. It's called the Wilshire Boulevard model. The, the Wilshire Boulevard model? Yes. If you're hit by a car, you can lay there without tying up traffic. <laughs> Mary, look, I'm tired. Let's go home. Uh, Mr. Nelson. Yes? Yeah. I think Mr. Benny's gonna buy a new tuxedo. He's had the same one for 20 years. My, it must be green by now. Green? The other day he hung it outside to air and the gardener pruned the sleeves. <laughs> well, first we'll sell him a suit, and then we'll see what we can do. Fine. Mary! Mary! Now, I want to go home. I'm exhausted. Look, Jack, we're not going to leave here until you get a new suit. If they haven't got one to fit you, maybe they can make one to order. Say, that's a brilliant idea. You know, a suit made to order will give you a much better fit. All right, all right. Uh, step right over here. And now, uh, shall I measure your chest, or would you rather not know? <laughs> now, cut that out. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad that you've decided to have a suit made to order. We have a beautiful selection of materials. Uh, step back here and I'll show you. Ah, here we are. Here's a very nice blue serge. Isn't that nice? Yes, but I think I... <laughs> Let me see. Mr. Nelson, this is beautiful material. Jack, I picked the most wonderful... <laughs> now, where did he go? <laughs> I don't understand where he could have gone. Where could he have disappeared to? I'm sure I don't know, Miss Livingston. <laughs> Look, Mr. Nelson, do something. He's somewhere around here. Well, if you like, I'll call the police department and ask him to send out a 705 and a half. A 705 and a half? What's that? Look, but not too hard. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. He said he wanted to go home. Oh, that's right. Maybe I'll go outside and take a look. Okay.
Mary. I don't know what's going on in this silly store. Well, it's your own fault for falling asleep. Well, I don't care. I'm going home. I've had enough. Well, if you go home now, you'll never get a suit. All right, I'll get a suit. I'll buy this. I'll take this one here, and I'll take this blue one, and this one. I'll take the real share Boulevard one. How do you know it's your size? I don't care whether it's my size or not. And I'll take these ties, all of these ties, and shirts. I'll have four shirts here. Just watch it. I'll take this. I'll take these ties, too. I'll take another suit. Here's a blue suit. I'll take this blue suit. This shirt. The hat. I'll take a hat. No. Me. 366 North Camden Drive, Beverly Hill. Uh, yeah, Goodbye. Well, well, just a moment, Mr. Benny. Uh, we always like to check on our advertising. Now tell me, did you come in because you saw our ad in the newspaper, or did you hear our commercial on the radio? Radio? Yes, we sponsor Hank, the all-night disc jockey. <laughs> All night. You will be back in just a moment, but first. Well, look, Rochester, I don't want any phone calls or any disturbances of any kind. Will you please close the blinds so it'll be nice and dark in here? Yes. Well, good night, boss. Good night, Rochester. Oh, boy, did I sleep. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ten full hours. Feel great. Four o'clock in the morning again. Well, guess I'll just have to take another walk. 